The news about the explosion in the South China Sea moved from a little-known website to the top of authoritative publications in 24 hours. A war correspondent tells how experienced journalists believe the blatant fake. The incident in the South China Sea was reported by a number of media outlets on November 21, 2019. It was described as an explosion with a TNT equivalent of 10 to 20 kilotons, which occurred at a depth of about 50 meters at 1822 on November 20, U.S. East Coast Time, 722 on November 21, local time. The source of the information was the American Hal Turner radio show website. The news was sensational, but due to the unauthorized source it had all the chances to not take off and die a natural death on the internet if the Russian Rospotrebnadzor had not spoken about the incident on November 22, 2019. The agency's website published an official commentary. According to information received from the Global Environmental Monitoring Network, an increase in the radiation background level was recorded in the South China Sea due to a radiation incident. Rospotrebnadzor strengthened monitoring of the radiation situation in the adjacent border areas. Presently, there is no threat of negative impact on the population of the Russian Federation. The ministry said in a statement. After that, some media outlets and bloggers went into there is no smoke without fire mode and began to discuss the likelihood of the incident in earnest. Other characters, who are commonly referred to in the media as military experts, joined the discussion, adding to the fog. There were serious discussions about a nuclear accident on an American or Chinese nuclear submarine, a possible incident with a North Korean ballistic missile launcher, an explosion of an underwater drone with a nuclear power plant on board, and finally a nuclear testing device, possibly Chinese, perhaps to scare the United States. The problem with all these versions is that none of those who put forward and discussed the various versions of events in the media bothered to assess what was happening against the simplest laws of logic and the basic facts known to anyone who has ever been interested in nuclear testing. So, in order. Nuclear Explosion The described conditions of the alleged explosion in the South China Sea, the power in the range of 20 kilotons, up to 50 meters deep, local time, 722, put a number of questions to the inquisitive reader, the first of which, who could observe it? According to mankind's experience with underwater nuclear explosions, such an incident, if it had occurred in reality, would have been accompanied by a very spectacular explosive sultan up to 2,000 meters high. Such a sultan, which could have been observed, given that more than one and a half hours had already passed since sunrise, from a distance of over 150 kilometers. The weather in the region that day, according to available sources, was good, with no precipitation, and variable cloud cover did not limit visibility across the horizon. Even more people would have heard the explosion, including on ships beyond the visible horizon, primarily due to sound propagation in the water column. Given that the South China Sea is one of the busiest sea crossings in the world as a whole, the probability that such special effects went unnoticed, or if they were noticed, unspoken, tends toward zero. Actually, this would be the end of the discussion, without going into the problems of tracking nuclear explosions and other high matter. Nevertheless, this news is interesting in its distribution mechanism, which allows us to understand the peculiarities of human reaction to information junkets, regardless of their realism. Duck Stories The original source, in the form of the Hal Turner radio show, is one of America's many right-wing micromedia outlets, with a characteristic set of numerous conspiracy theories, periodically distinguished by occasional news slips. One of the most famous was a story about pledging U.S. land and real estate as collateral for U.S. government debt to Chinese holders. To back up his throw-in, Turner, shortly after the original report was published, supplemented it with information about rising background radiation in the blast area, obtained through the global radiation monitoring network, Urid Monitor. This network is a crowdsourcing project that invites those who wish to buy sensors, install them in their homes, and send the information to the network. The Urid Monitor data spoke of an increase in background up to 0.24 SV/H, but such a level by itself says nothing in a number of places in the world it exceeds these values for natural reasons, and such a change may well be due to inaccuracy of the dosimeter. Such background in principle should have been enough for any sane news editor to ignore the message, but here the X Factor intervened in the face of Rospotrebnadzor, which published a statement on the site, which led to an information wave. 
The USS Wayne E. Meyer and the Corvette Gabriel Cliffords once again visited the scene near the Chinese artificial islands, which China considers its territorial waters, while the US considers the waters free for navigation. Information about the presence of US warships in the vicinity of the incident, interpreted outside the context of ongoing US naval activity in the South China Sea, did its job, leading some authors to draw vague conclusions about the possible connection between the ship's passage and the nuclear incident. On November 23, 2019, the duck reached RIA Novosti, not lazy to take a comment on the issue of a possible explosion from the head of the SVR, Sergei Narishkin. The head of the SVR said that the service has no data on the incident and the need to check the available reports. Working Model This would be the end of the story, but the demonstrated model of the passage of information is clearly destined for a great future. The main elements of this model are the following. 1. Starting message on a little-known, possibly marginalized site, with additional social media pushback. 2. Backing up the duck with an independent source, which in this case was your monitor. 3. Dispersing the duck and turning it into news through the reaction of official structures, in this case, in the form of Rospotrebnadzer. The result is a small, easily refuted, but toxic myth that becomes the subject of many secondary discussions, and in the minds of many uncritical people becomes a fact. Let us try to complicate this model. At the first stage, we will assume the possible targeted planting of disinformation not via marginal media outlets, but via quite systemic ones. The next step would be the selection of a more solid affiliated structure as backup, and finally, a pre-arranged follow-up dispersal. The effect in this case can be much more significant and dangerous especially if the dispersal is not an obvious duck such as the discussed nuclear incident report, but something more well within the logical thinking. The history of the wealth earned by elaborate disinformation goes back a long way. But the situation in which skillfully planted disinformation eventually forces the enemy to start a war, leaving its initiator in white and with clean hands, has so far been quite exotic. The growing variety of threats, combined with a decreasing threshold of critical perception of information, makes such a development quite possible and feasible. At the same time, it is noted that the South China Sea is an active merchant shipping area, which is patrolled by nuclear submarines of the United States and China. Specifically in the region, the states bordering the South China Sea, only China has nuclear weapons of all the countries in the region. In the 80s, Taiwan also had its own top-secret program to build its own nuclear arsenal, which was exposed in 1987, when it had almost achieved results. Under pressure from Washington, all work in this direction in Taiwan was curtailed. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.